without change, something sleeps inside us. The sleeper must awaken. Hello, and welcome to another We Ourselves video. Today, I want to discuss the backlash caused by the cancellation of the Disney Plus show, The Acolyte. There's a reason why in the black community, we have this saying that a black person has to work twice as hard to attain the same thing that a white individual in America can attain. And for black professionals, that has often meant that we have to have twice as much formal education. We have to have twice as many years of experience. We have to have twice as many commendations and awards, everything, in order for us to attain the same position or the same pay as our white colleagues. And then we run the awful gambit of somebody looking at all of our credentials and saying that we're overqualified, which is something else that we run into. And there's also an equally well-known idea, a quote within our community, that in order to overcome racism, you do it with excellence. Both of those things are exhibited by black professionals, no matter what their profession is, particularly when they are in a largely white environment. It's one of the reasons why we as black individuals, even when we have the insurance, the health insurance, the income, all of those things being equal, why we have worse health outcomes, even when we diet, all that, give it all that, exercise, we do all that. It's because we carry around this added burden this added anxiety of having to perform twice as hard, having to work twice as hard, just to prove that we deserve to be where we are. Having to reprove our worthiness on a regular basis, it adds to burnout among black professionals. Again, particularly those that are in largely white environments. The reason I mention this <laughs> is because I was looking at some of the videos by people who were complaining about the canceling of the Disney Plus show, The Acolyte. And I came across one that really summed up what white individuals, even when they claim to be our allies, what they don't understand, because that has not been their lived reality. Even if they come from an underrepresented group, even if they are say like white females, are white members of the LGBTQIA plus community. So that you are starting it 20 laps ahead of your black and BIPOC brethren. And many don't want to acknowledge that. And so as I watched this video review and this rant about, well, it wasn't necessarily a rant. It was, it was very reason the, the individual wasn't shouting at the top of their lungs. They were being very reasonable about what they were saying, but they destroyed their own argument, which is basically an excuse for why it was written so bad. And one of the excuses is that, well, you know, first um, seasons of, and the person actually used Star Trek Next Generation as an example, even though we're talking about a streaming show and not a traditional network episodic show. There are differences, but they use that as an example. But then they cited the actual better example of Andor. And the person destroyed their entire argument by saying Andor had similar issues and it had similar representations. There was a lesbian couple in there. There were a lot of, it was totally diverse cast, but yet it did not come in for the same criticism that the Acolyte did because it was well written. That is what this individual said. And for me, you just undercut all of your other arguments because you yourself said, because it was well written, the Star Wars fan base, the ones who watched it, they had no problem with all those other elements in there. So if that is your example, then you are disproving your argument that they had problems with that same representation in the Acolyte. But the reason I mentioned that saying in the black community that we understand, particularly as black professionals, we have to be twice as good as our white colleagues and what comes with that is our stuff has to be spotless. It literally has to be twice as good. And we know that in order to do what? To avoid the criticism, to avoid any chink in the armor that will allow the people who don't want to see us succeed, come in and pick it apart and then hide behind this quote unquote, objective evaluation and critique. And that is why within this realm, you see black actors like Jonathan Majors work twice as hard to make Kang, the Conqueror, the best thing in a failed movie, <laughs> okay? 
That is why you saw Chadwick Boseman and company when they did the first Black Panther and they were largely left alone. That's why they went above and beyond and that's why that movie made over a billion dollars. Even something like The Woman King, even with this controversy, there's no doubt and none of the critics said anything about the performances of those actresses in that movie. They did their job. They went above and beyond to make it work. We know we have to do that because we live working twice as hard as our white colleagues because we know that we can't fail upwards. And what this person who was upset with the cancellation of the acolyte did not understand is that is not their lived reality. And they did not understand. Even though they, they pointed out that Andor <laughs> was successful and was well written and therefore could have some of the same elements in it that the acolyte did, yet it did not get the criticism, we would have said from the start, this needs to be as good as Andor. This needs to be written as well as Andor. And if we are left alone, we will do our thing and we will many times outshine our non-black colleagues, which a lot of people don't like, which is why they always have to control what we do and mess it up. At the end of the day, the person to blame is a quote unquote ally, Leslie Headland, a member of the LGBTQIA plus community. She is a successful showrunner. She knows her business, so why would you come out with this show with all of this diversity in it and all of these topics and knowing that you were going to mess with some of the fundamental Star Wars lore? Why the hell would you come out and make the writing so much worse than the other ones that are out there? So much so that people who want to support you have to acknowledge the bad writing. Why would you do that? The reason is, is because this YouTuber and Leslie Headland, at the end of the day, they are white people. <laughs> I, and, I, and I hate to be so stark about it, but we are the ones, black Americans, we are the ones that live and know that our stuff has to be twice as good to avoid all of that mess, to shut up all of the critics who don't want us to see us do well, to force them to evaluate it for what it really is. That is why you have our performers outperform. That is why you have our actors out act. That is why you have our Olympians perform in their different areas. We know that we have to be twice as good. And Leslie Hedlund either didn't care or didn't know because of who she is and where she's coming from. Not her LGBTQIA status, but her status as a white citizen of the United States. It should have been as good or, or better than the writing for The Mandalorian season one and two. We as black people would have been aiming for that or aiming better because we know this is our chance and we can't mess it up. But when you don't come from our society, you don't care because you know you're gonna get that next come up because you have connection because of people who look just like you in the industry. Again, going back to the NAACP report, there's not enough of us in the decision-making process there's not enough of us in the writer's room to make a difference so that we get representation that is not subpar. The acolyte was subpar representation. And so as I watched this video and I, I see the reports of all this backlash against the cancellation, it's like, why? And I have to say this, you are not being an ally to the black community. You're not being an ally to black representation. You're not being allies to black LGBTQ representation because you're coming at it from an understanding that is not consistent with our understanding. And there's no way in hell that if Rick Famuyiwa, a director on seasons one and two of The Mandalorian, had been in charge of this with John Favreau in charge of Lucasfilm, if this had been his show, there's no way in hell that it would not have been as good as Mandalorian season one and two, and the writing would have been as tight as Andor, because he understands it. Even if he doesn't say it to you, we all understand it when we're in this professions where we are the minority, numeric minority. We understand what we have to do. And I just wanted to say this when it comes to allies, quote unquote allies of, of black LGBTQIA+. There's a reason why there's a black pride. And whether you're a member of the community or not, you understand why there had to be a separate black pride. Because black, queer, gay, whatever, did not feel like they were represented. 
by the larger gay community, the white gay community. When it comes to the venues, when it comes to the concerts and things like that, it was white, 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 white. When it came to the activities, when it came to the meetups, it's white, 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 white. And so black gay members of the community, they decided to start their own first in Atlanta, I believe, but it is is all over the country and it is now a couple of months removed from the regular, i.e. white pride celebrations. Just like everything else, black people had to set up their own just to get any kind of sense of representation. So when I see these people who were in here arguing about the acolyte as bad as it was by somebody who's supposed to be a member of the community, and you put out something like that, that is so beneath what came before, you're not an ally when you put our faces on front of the camera. Because what you're doing is you're saying that putting these diverse characters on this show, it automatically means less quality. So the question is, why didn't the acolyte, knowing all this stuff going in, knowing how much was riding on it, and knowing that you had somebody who's an experienced show writer, why did it come out so bad? And so for all those people who don't look like me, who are complaining about it being canceled, it's your own fault. And even your excuses for why is it canceled are feeding the beast because all of you are on the same farm. You are part of the same family and you are the problem, not the solution and not true allies. So please stop. Stop using us in your fight between each other because you're mad that your brother, your cousin, your dad, your uncle got all the chances and you didn't for so long. Stop using us in your fight because what's gonna be left in the dust are the black and BIPOC members of those same communities. If you're able to move aside all the discrimination against you because of your sex, your gender, your ID, your sexual preference, whatever, in the day that you do that, you will then be able to enjoy the full benefits of being a white citizen of the United States and your black and BIPOC quote unquote allies will still be black and BIPOC and they will be left in the dust. And that's not me just going off the cuff because history has shown that is what happens over and over again. And this show is just an example of it. Leslie Hedlund is gonna go on and do something else. Guarantee you, you're gonna see that she's doing something else. Why did you allow this to happen? In some ways, I think there's a low key bigotry and racism on the part of the people who are supposed to be our allies. Otherwise, there's no excuse for the bad writing in that show. None at all. For, for $180 million, damn it. Could have done a hell of a lot better than that. But anyway, those are my thoughts on the matter. Let me know what you think in the comments. And as always, like, subscribe, and share, and I will see you in the next video. The sleeper has awakened!